Okay, open your science fusions book to page 115, lesson four. Essential question for this lesson is what are structural adaptations? The engage your brain, it says, find the answer to the following question in this lesson and record it here. Why is the pelican's beak so large? So we're trying to figure out why the pelican's beak is so large. If you think you might know the answer, you can write it in this space here. Um, lesson vocabulary, it says list the terms as you read about each one. Make note in the interactive glossary. So for this lesson, it looks like we have three vocabulary words. Active reading, visual aids, pictures and their captions add information to the text on a page. Active readers pause the reading to review pictures and captions, then decide how the information in the pictures and captions adds to what is provided in the text. Staying alive adaptations. Life in the wild isn't easy. Animals must survive in their environment where they live. Their adaptations help them stay alive. Active reading. As you read these two pages, draw a line from the adaptation shown in each picture to the word that it represents. An adaptation is any trait that helps a living thing survive. Animals that are hunted for food are called prey. Animals that hunt prey are called predators. Predators and prey have adaptations that help them catch food or avoid being eaten. Animals have other kinds of adaptations too. Okay, now we're going to be doing the active reading part where you're going to be drawing the line from what the adaptation is. So what animal in this, what animal is this? It has flat teeth. The flat teeth allow it to grind grass. So what's the adaptation that helps this animal? You should be drawing a line from flat teeth right here to the horse. So right to the horse's flat teeth. Okay, next picture we have here. The tiger eats animals such as wild boar and deer. The tiger's sharp teeth help it tear meat. So what's the adaptation that helps it eat? So you should be drawn from sharp teeth to the tiger's fangs. Okay, next picture in the top right where the bunny is, the hare. The Arctic hare lives in snow and ice. Less heat escapes from its small ears than from the larger ears of other hares. Its small ears help it stay warm in the cold. So what's the adaptation for the snow hare or the Arctic hare? Be its small ears. So you should be drawing underline from small ears up to the snow hare's ears, the Arctic hare's ears. Okay, the last one we're looking at is the jackrabbit. The jackrabbit lives in the desert. Its long ears contain many tiny blood vessels that help remove heat from its body. This helps the jackrabbit keep cool in the heat. You should be drawing from long ears to the jackrabbit's long ears. Guess who? A finch has a beak that is used to crack seeds and nuts. An eagle uses its beak to tear meat for food. Which bird's beak is shown in photo number one and photo number two? Go ahead and pause the video and write your answers there. Okay, for number one, you should have written, written eagle. And for number two, you should have written a finch. Staying safe, we're looking at the defense adaptations. Look out, it's a predator. Sun adaptations help animals defend themselves without fighting. Active reading, as you read these two pages, find and underline examples of defense adaptations. Defense adaptations may attack a predator's sense of sight, smell, taste, touch, or hearing. A bad taste, loud noise, or nasty odor is often enough to make the predator go away. A porcupine raises its quills, its wings, its it swings its tall. One good strike poses the quills into the attacker's skin. Ouch! So what is the adaptation there? So you should be going from quills to the porcupine's quills in the picture. A skunk spray has a bad odor. Even skunks dislike the smell. The spray also burns the eyes. It's a powerful defense against predators. So we should be going from spray 
to the skunk's bottom. Okay, next one. The caterpillar eats milkweed. The milkweed makes the cal cal caterpillar taste bad to birds. The pattern of stripes on the caterpillar. Huh. Holy moly, I can't say that word. Caterpillar is a warning to birds. It tells the birds that they don't want to eat it. So you should be going from the ca caterpillar stripes right here to where the caterpillar stripes are in the picture. The frill lizard hisses with open jaws. Its frill opens wide. It's a scary sight that frightens some predators away. So you should be going frill opens wide to the frill in the picture over here for the lizard. Sound the alarm. Like pet dogs, prairie dogs bark when they sense danger. How does this adaptation help them survive? Go ahead and pause the video. Why do you think that would help the prairie dogs survive barking? Okay, an example that we have is a porcupine's dog's bark alert other prairie dogs. Danger is near. So then they go and hide. Creature costumes or camouflage and mimicry. Now you see it. Now you don't. Now you see it, but it looks like something else. Active reading, as you read these two pages, find and underline the names of two adaptations that involve an animal's appearance. Some animals can hide without trying. These animals are hidden by their shape, colors, or patterns. Such disguises are called camouflage. Some harmless animals look a lot like animals that are harmful to predators or that taste bad. Since predators don't know which animal is harmful, neither animal gets eaten. Imitating the look of another animal is called mimicry. You should have underlined camouflage and mimicry are the two adaptations that animals use. Look at the color of this snow leopard's fur. Look at its spots. Its camouflage helps it blend into the background of snow and rock. This helps it sneak up on prey. And it's really hard to see even if you look at the picture. Next one, this orchid mantis is the same color as the flower it's sitting on. Can you see it? The insect is perfectly camouflaged. Right here is the Otis Mantis sitting on top of the flower. Okay, monarch butterfly. Eating monarch butterflies makes birds sick. Birds avoid eating them. The victory, oh, the viceroy, sorry, looks like the monarch, so birds leave them alone too. Viceroy butterfly, monarch butterfly look very similar. The frogfish can look like a rock or a sponge. It can look like algae. Animals try to rest on the rock. Others try to eat the algae. The frogfish traps and eats them. Now that does look like a rock. Okay, next one. Make it blend. Color the lizard so that it is hidden on the leaf. On the line below, identify whether this is a camouflage or mimicry. Kate, when you're done with that, the answer for that one would have been camouflage. Plant facts. So we're looking at plant adaptations. Plants have adaptations that help them survive too. How? Read more to find out. Active reading. As you read these two pages, draw a line from the pictures to the words that tell how an adaptation helps a plant. Plants need water. There isn't much water in the desert, so desert plants are adapted to hold moisture. Desert plants, such as cactuses, have thick stems that store water. The leaves of desert plants also have a waxy coating that helps prevent water loss. Most decent plants have spines, not leaves. Narrow spines help prevent water vapor from escaping from the plant. The spines also keep animals from eating the plants. 
Other plants have different adaptations that help them survive. Okay, let's look at the picture down below for the pitcher plants. Pitcher plants can't get the nutrients they need from soil. The plant's pitchers hold water and trap insects for food. The sides are slippery, so when insects fall into the pitchers, they can't get out. The insects are digested, providing nutrients to the plant. Okay, let's look at the blackberries up above. Blackberries taste bitter until they are ripe. Their bitter taste is an adaptation. It stops animals from eating the berries before the seeds are old enough to produce new plants. Then let's look at the bottom picture. The stone plant blends into the background of rocks and stones. Grazing animals don't see it. Camouflage keeps it from being eaten. Do the math. Solve a word problem. A red pitcher plant catches three insects each week. A green pitcher plant catches two insects each week. How many more insects does the red plant catch in four weeks? Key thing is four weeks. Then the green plant would in four weeks. Show your work. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out the answer and write it on the lines over here. Okay, hey, is what you should have did is taken for the red pitcher plant, you would have taken, it can eat three insects a week and multiplied that by four. So the red plant can eat 12 insects over the four week period. The green plant can eat two insects a week. So multiply that by four and you would have eight insects for the green plant over the four week period. You would take 12 minus 8, and they would have four more insects caught by the red plant over the four-week period. For extended learning, if you want to do the sum it up, brain check, and apply concepts, that is up to you.